Hey guys, what is going on and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country. It's episode number nine and today we are returning with a brand new season as we play our first game of the Serie A away against newly promoted Frozen Ono. We'll also take a look at how pre-season went and of course there's the much loved transfer special as well where Sandro Tonali is still a Brescia player. Let's get to that first. Yes, for those of you that are new to the channel, you will quickly find out that the season openers are a lot of fun because the transfer specials are just great value, man. I mean, we talk about the signings one by one, reveal them one by one, and uh, show you the full list of departures from the club as well over the summer window. So we start the new season off, the first transfer special of the series, uh, by looking at our departures. And as you can see, once again, we remain a fully Italian side. That's right, we sold all of our foreign-based players in this window. We raised 9.25 mil uh, for the players we sold. We released a few players including the captain who actually ended up retiring he's not on the list for some reason but he's retired and uh, you can see the noteworthy sales here uh, were Bjarnison who was out on loan last year he's gone to Toronto for a million pounds Florian I he's gone back to France for one point was it 1.2 1.2 million yep uh, Spalek has gone for a million um, Tehu went for 2.5 million Zmral went for 2.5 mil as well and our foreign players all left with Curzio being the final one out the door going back to Brazil for 850,000 pounds once again, you'll notice we could have got more money, but as I said before, I was fine underselling them because we couldn't use them and there was no value in keeping them here. And we sold a few uh, other players as well, uh, including Semprini, who you might have noticed last season. He played a bit for us at Ryback. He's gone to Venezia uh, on a cheap deal, and uh, that's about it, really. So, yeah, those are the sales there. And uh, two, uh, two of our youngsters you saw last season got loaned out as well. Those are Magri, uh, the young left back, of course, got that assist in the, uh, the game against Lecce towards the end of the campaign. Really big one, too. He's gone out out on loan for a full season and also Getty has gone out on loan to Venezia as well this is a good young talent midfield we played quite a bit last season so those are the sales 9.25 mil raised and now moving on to the signings Sandro Tornali remains a Brescia player we still managed to set a record for most expensive transfer window in Brescia football club history there were six signings in total I'll review them one by one least interesting to most interesting I've got to say as well really good window this one I like it a lot yeah, don't expect the likes of Moise Akin or Alessio Romagnoli signing for £50 million each. But in terms of value for money, which is really important in the first seasons with Brescia, this was a really good window. I thought all the deals we got represented really good value for money. Starting with this guy, uh, Lorenzo Colombini. He's a young left back slash centre after Inter Milan released in the summer. My director of football, or was it head of youth development? Head of youth development, I think it was, uh, actually uh, negotiated a deal for me. He showed him to me. And when I saw he had 18 determination, I was like, yep, you, you know what? I like me. It's like your best friend, you know, at a bar when he's wingman in you. He knows what type of girls you want, man. He knows what type of girls you're after. That's what my head of youth development knows. He knows I love the 18 determination. He knows I love those sort of players. So I said, yeah, we'll sign him on a freebie. So Colin Beanie in and uh, not, not great to begin with, but could be all right in the future. So next up is probably the only signing of the lot that probably doesn't represent great value for money. However, I have to say I'm quite happy about this one. It's Nicola Dal Monte who we signed from Genoa for 3.3 mil. They put him on a transfer list after last year was out on loan in the Serie B with Trapani. And we snapped him up because in the summer, this is really interesting, but there was major interest from Napoli. Lazio, Roma and Inter Milan, four big Serie A clubs, all expressed major interest in him. For some reason, none of them put a bid in. Maybe that should have told me something. But I thought if the big clubs want him, then we should want him as well. And when you look at his stats here, he's not the quickest. You know, technically he's all right. 13 crossing, 14 passing, 13 technique. Mentally, you know, I love the 18 determination. But again, he's relatively average all across the board. I can't, I can't tell exactly why the big clubs really wanted him or seemed to be interested in him. But we snapped him up. And the reason I did sign this guy is because because last year we had no wingers whatsoever and that's why we persisted with the 5-3-2 for practically the entire season because we had no one to play on the wings. This guy is a natural on both sides and can play up top as well. So the versatility there is really key. And for squad depth and again possibly changing tax at some point, this is why the guy was really appealing to me. Plus the 18 determination of course as well. So Dalmonte in, four year deal, 22 grand a week relatively pricey but in terms of his potential it seems he could be alright in the future. Let's hope he stays driven and exceeds his potential as well. 
So moving on, third of six signings, and I must say I'm very happy about the value for money on this deal for sure. It is a new centre-back. His name is Gian Giacomo Magnani, and we signed him from Sassuolo for just £3 million in the summer. The only red flag about this guy is that last season he didn't play a single competitive game for Sassuolo, and I'm not entirely sure why, because he wasn't injured, and therefore he had no suspensions, but for some reason, Sassuolo just did not play him once, but he was on the transfer list, £3 million, and again, we snapped him up, and that definitely represents good value for money, because he's only 24 years old, he'll turn 25 in October, so he's still got his best years ahead of him, it's a five-year contract, 23 grand a week, and when you look at his stats here as well, he looks really solid all across the board. Physically, I love his physical stats here. 15 strength, 15 natural fitness, 15 jumping with 14 balance, and he's six foot three as well. So he's got a bit of height on him. Mentally, again, really solid all across the board with 14 determination and 14 positioning and a trio, 14 heading, 15 marking and 14 tackling as well. Looks pretty solid all across the board. And of course, last season, second worst defensive record in the Serie A. We needed new defenders and we got a really good one here for £3 million. Looks, looks decent. I'm happy with this one. So three down, three to go. And once again, I must say I'm really happy with this signing as well. These guys aren't well beaters. They're not going to be stars, but they represent good value for money. And they're good first team players as well. If you remember last season, I talked about our wing backs in the team, Stefano Sabelli and Bruno Martella as two of our best players and most important players in the team because the wing backs were so crucial to us when going forward. That's why I wanted to sign a new right back and a new left back. I've done both. And this is the new right back, Fabio De Paoli, who's come in from recently relegated for Sampdoria for just 3.5. 4 mil. Last year at Sampdoria, he got four assists in 31 games, averaging a 6.77. Not bad whatsoever. And this guy's got some really, really nice stats. And I love the versatility on this guy as well. You can see when going forward, he's relatively decent. He's got 14 acceleration, 14 pace, 14 natural fitness, and 14 stamina. So very well balanced all across the board there. Mentally, again, also really, really nicely balanced with 15 determination, uh, 13 positioning, 13 teamwork, and 15 work rate as well. You know, I love to see see that and technically too I talked about it, the wing backs in this team need to be good when going forward well this guy's got 13 crossing 12 dribbling 13 first touch 13 passing with 13 technique as well and at the back 10 marking not the best but 12 tackling isn't too bad so Depauli comes in I don't think he'll start ahead of Sabelli who was amazing last year but he is four years younger he only turned 23 back in the end of April and again as an attacking fullback he looks very exciting and his best years ahead of him as well for 3.4 mil I think it was really really good signing and um, yeah a great backup for Sabelli now and again the wing back so important to us we've got a really good one on the right side here and with two signings to go I'll go with the most expensive signing of the window next who is our new left wing back and whilst apparently probably won't start I think this guy will start ahead of Bruno Martella Nicola Muru is our next signing and I've got to say I think this is probably my favorite signing of the window I'm buzzing about this one because he was part of the Sampdoria side like Paoli that were relegated last season so we snapped up both of their first choice wing backs and as you can see he had a really solid year in this area last season two goals and five assists plus three man of the match awards in 31 games six of those games came from the bench as well averaging a 6.91 all season long put it this way Sampdoria weren't relegated because of their wing backs last season they were probably two of their best players in the team so we snapped them both up here to become our new starting left and right wing backs if the Pali does take over from Sabelli and I've got to say Nicola Muri man he's got some absolutely fantastic stats so the Pali is relatively quick as is Muru uh, 14 acceleration and 14 pace on Nicola with 15 natural fitness and 16 stamina as well really happy about that because again wing back's going to go bombing up and down the pitch all game long mentally like Paoli, really solid all across the board 14 for determination teamwork and work rate I love to see that with 13 positioning and technically as well again going forward looks very decent 13 crossing 13 dribbling 12 first touch 13 passing with 13 technique as well and at the back 13 marking and 14 tackling this was a really good signing 7 million pounds in the prime of his career right now at 25 years old it's a really pricey contract 45 thousand pound a week for the five-year deal and I think he becomes one of our best players in the team now the wing back so crucial in our 5-3-2 slash 3-5-2 system we needed two good ones we've got two uh, two players used to play with one another at Sampdoria and I've got really good stats both when defending and most importantly going forward as well seven mil pricey contract very expensive signing but I think these two are going to be really really important to us this year 
So moving on to our sixth and final signing, and as we continue the theme of good value for money deals, I've got to say this guy could prove to be an absolute bargain if he turns out to be as good as I'm hoping he will be. Now last season goals weren't a major concern for us, but it is worth pointing out we never had a consistent and reliable goal scorer up top. Mario Balotelli got the most for us last season, but didn't even make into double digits, and most of his goals came from the penalty spot. I felt like we needed someone clinical, someone reliable, and a different option up top this season and I'm really happy to have this guy and he looks like a bully a real physical presence someone that asserts himself and hopefully is a source of goals on a regular basis welcome to Brescia Football Club Andrea Patagna yes so happy about this deal now last season he was out on loan at Spal and he only scored three goals in 24 games there in the Serie A for the struggling Spal side so slightly concerned about the low productivity last year but it is worth pointing out the year before that he scored 16 goals in 36 games so he knows how to put the ball in the back of the net he just needs to do it on a reliable basis and hopefully now he's finally got a home as well he's bounced around from Atalanta to Spal on loan with Napoli as well now he's signed here for 4.1 mil and arrives on a four-year contract as well I'm hoping he'll settle here have a home get some TLC and prove to be as good as I hope he can be he's already been capped by Italy once before no reason he can't be caught up to the senior side again and this guy is something we've never had here with Brescia or haven't had here with Brescia since the save began and that's a real physical powerhouse up top because as you know Patagna he is all about the strength he's six foot three really really tall with 15 jumping 18 balance and 17 strength as well so as a target man for someone to cross to with Sabelli and De Pauli on the, uh, the right side and Martella and Muro on the left. They've got an option in the box they can float crosses into. He can hold the ball up and bring others into play as well. Perhaps his strike partner too. We haven't had a target man here before. Now we do. Great stats to do that role with 18 teamwork as well. 15 work rate, 14 decisions, 15 bravery, 14 aggression, 14 anticipation and 13 off the ball. Not bad either. And technically as well, there's no reason this guy can't be a goal scorer as well as a goal provider. He's got 13 for finishing, 13 for first touch, 14 for technique, 16 for heading as well. He's got 12 dribbling, so good with the ball at his feet as well, with 11 long shots and 14 passing too. So to put it bluntly, I don't see a negative to this guy. I know it didn't work out last year at Spal for him, but now he's got a home here, a permanent home. I'm hoping he will be our main source of goals this season. So Patagna in, and again, a really great value for money deal. Just 4.1 mil is all it costs to bring in, and already Italy international, 35 grand a week, and I, I really hope he's as good as he seems like he is here. I, I don't see a negative to this guy, man. As a target man, he looks absolutely perfect. So welcome, Patagna. He looks like a bully, and uh, I'm really happy to have him here at Brescia. So in the end, as you can see, we spent nine, uh, so we sorry, uh, raised 9.25 mil uh, for the sales. Most of those, of course, being the foreign players that we sold in the window. Those are the ones that were out on loan last year. And we spent 21 million pounds on bringing in these six players, most of which going on Nicola Muru uh, for 7 million pounds. But again, the rest of the players around the same fee each time. But I've got to say here, the players that have come in, these guys here, they're all starters or bench players. I think last season we had a real problem with depth in this team. We didn't have much of it. Outside of the first 11, we were practically always using the same players in the same formation. We didn't have enough versatility. Like we didn't have a target man. Now we've got one. We didn't have a proper winger. Now we've got one. The wingbacks in uh, Martella and Sabelli. We didn't have great replacements for them. Now we've got them. So, you know, I'm, I'm really happy with the players you brought in. And I think as, as a window in a hole, 21 mil, it's a lot to, lot to spend but raising 9.25 mil softens the blow and keeping Sandro Tonali here as well I think was a great window for us so I know you'll all be eager to know what happened with Sandro Tonali in the window then. As you know, he had those two release clauses in his contract, the relegation release clause, which is of course made redundant after we survived on the final day, and the minimum fee release clause, that was 41.5 mil. Well, as you can see, there has been interest and there have been bids. If you follow me on Twitter, you would have seen them. Uh, and, and by the way, guys, if you're new to the channel, do follow me on Twitter. It's at DocLanders. I keep you guys up to date with a save in between episodes. But yeah, there were bids from Real Madrid, Spurs and Inter Milan as well. However, the bids did not get anywhere close to the minimum fee release clause. They were like 20, 21 million pounds around that. And quite frankly, as I told you guys in the season finale last year, I'm not selling him unless someone meets that minimum fee release clause. He's staying here before that, uh, until then. So Tonali stays 
And as you can see there, I promised him that if a club comes in and matches minimum fee release clause, I'll just let him go and not even bother trying to talk him round. But yeah, Tonali stays. I've made him club captain this year as well, as we lost our club captain uh, who retired at the end of the season in Gasteldelo. So Tonali takes the armband. I'm still in his favoured personnel. And for now, Sandro Tonali remains as a Brescia player and becomes club captain as well. Absolutely buzzing. I don't think we'll keep him for much longer than this season, but for now, he's still our player. So as we take a look at the team report, as you can see, there are now more strengths than weaknesses. You love to see that because normally you start off with more weaknesses and strengths. Now we've got more strengths than weaknesses, uh, including this one here, which is my favorite one. This is a determined group of players. You love to see that. And when you look at the squad depth as well, I alluded to that a moment ago. This is this is much more like it this season. You know, last season we had no wingers whatsoever. Now we've got one in Dal Monte, you know, up top as well. Bringing in Patagna, Donnarumma and Tori Grossa didn't really score for us at all last season, despite Tori Grossa scoring in and go on the final day. You know, we needed someone like Mario Balotelli up top who you know can get you a goal. You look at the wing backs as well, De Pauli and Nicola Muru coming in, really, really important. Magnani coming in at centre back. You know, our centre backs last year were so, so young. Perola and Armini, they were babies. They were teenagers in our back three. We needed someone that's a little bit older to help steady the ship there at uh, the, uh, the back. Where is he? There's Magnani right there. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with the depth we've got this year. Again, bringing in a winger just in case we change our tactics too. I think, I think this is a a really decent Brescia team, man. I mean, is it good enough to survive again for a second straight season? Well, when you look at a Serie A season preview for this year, we have been tipped to survive this year by the media, but only just. The three teams that came up, Empoli, Piscara, and Frozenone, who we played today, those are the bottom three according to the media, but again, we've all got the same odds in terms of title winners. So I, I, I think, once again, we will be in a relegation dogfight all season long, but... I'd say we're better than the teams that came up this season. So I, I, I feel confident. I feel confident. What the hell is that? The media just said that my personality is fickle. Get stuffed. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Get out of here, man. But as for the competition's uh, expectations, uh, just like last season, the exact same. Reached the fourth qualifying round of the Tim Cup, which I uh, think, yeah, we have done because uh, we made it through the third qualifying round. I'll show you that fixture in a moment's time. Uh, we beat Monopoly at home. Uh, great name for a team, by the way. And uh, also to fight bravely against relegation. So once again, the board predict we will probably be in the bottom three if not just keeping our heads above water. So yeah, same expectations in both competitions and we should be able to meet those. Financially speaking, as you can see, we are raising the club's bank balance gradually all throughout the course of last season. However, like a roller coaster, it has now come down in the summer window by five and a half million pounds, which, to be fair, pretty much always happens in football managers. We're now down to 25.5 mil. We're still relatively rich considering Brescia's stature, but have lost quite a bit of money in this summer window uh, based on the new players you brought in. And again, as well, the wage bill here at Brescia. Oh, now that is a big spike. It's like seeing coronavirus cases in North Manchester. Yes, there's a big, big spike here. Um, that wasn't the best joke, was it? Not bad, not bad though. But uh, yeah, there's a big spike here. And um, yeah, it's 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 a bit of a shame. But I've put some players on big contracts. You know, again, Patagna, Del Monte, uh, Muru on 45 grand a week. We, we got a big wage bill this year. So hopefully the players will prove to be worth their big pay packets. Um, was there anything else I wanted to show you other than preseason? Oh yeah, one thing you guys will be interested in is there has been a change in our backroom staff. Uh, we lost uh, a really important coach in Cordoba, who was our best defensive coach here last season with 18, I think it was, or possibly 19 actually, but uh, he left to Torino and I lost my right hand man as well. Yes, not only did Torino snatch one of my defensive coaches away, God knows why after the season we had last year at the back being the second worst defensive team in the division, but they also snapped my right hand man up as well. Uh, Michelle Feeney uh, went to Torino to join up as an assistant manager, one year of working with me, and he was already sick to, sick to death of me, so uh, Feeney left as well. And uh, to be fair though, because we lost those two uh, staff members there, we got around a million pounds in compensation, which is kind of nice. I would have re preferred to have kept Cordoba, but I wasn't really too attached to my right I am man. So I decided to hire a new assistant manager. And for those of you that have been on my channel for a while, you know, I always get an interesting assistant manager. And I've gone with Giuseppe Rossi. Yes, Giuseppe Rossi. Oh, what could have been, man. This guy, the uh, dual uh, American slash Italian uh, forward. He had a, a great promising start to his career, as we know. He moved to Manchester United at an early age. Uh, he had a good uh, spell at uh, Parma. He really hit the ground running at Villarreal. But as we know, injuries really ruined this guy, man. Such a shame. He had a great season with Fiorentina many years ago, but never really managed to recover. Never shaked off his injury plague stats and eventually decided to hang up the boots after last 
last season, spent a year out in Saudi Arabia. So he hung up his boots, he decided to retire, and I said, Giuseppe, why don't you come on as my right-hand man? He speaks fluent English, so that'll help me out, because I speak no Italian whatsoever. And uh, yeah, Giuseppe Rossi is my right-hand man. Not quite on Gelson Fernandez's level, but uh, yeah, Rossi, my assistant manager. And so as we take a look at pre-season, you can see our friendlies in the summer. We started off with three defeats against some big European sides. We responded with five wins against sides that we should really beat, including getting the testosterone flowing. Even in Italy, I always get the testosterone flowing from our team with a 15-0 win there uh, against the local side. And the first competitive fixture of the season was the Tim Cup for qualifying round, which we made it through very comfortably uh, against a leisure pro side monopoly, uh, beaten by four goals to nil where Sandro Tonali in the first half he shouldn't be here man he's too good for this club it's ridiculous it's like when when we got relegated with Norwich in my last little manager series and went down to the championship and Buendia was still there in the championship for us it's just ridiculous Tonali's too good for this team man he set up three of our four goals uh, which all came in the first half all from set pieces as well Sistana so Armini scoring his first goal with the club and Patagna also getting off the mark on his debut and the other goal was uh, Stefano Sabelli uh, converted a Nicola Muru cross. You can see why I emphasised uh, the importance of wing backs in this team as they combined for our third of four in what was a very easy victory there to start the campaign off competitively. And again, we've been drawn against Venezia uh, from Venice at home, which we were away from home in that game uh, in the fourth qualifying round. I feel confident we'll make it through to the first round of the cup, just like we did last season. So, yep, I think that's basically all there is to show you as we're about to begin the campaign. I suppose the only other thing you might might be interested in is uh, in the summer there were some under 19 championships uh, we had three players go uh, to the championships they were Parola, uh, Rovaglia and someone else went as well but I can't remember who it was. But Italy won it, though. Uh, they beat England in the final by two goals to one. And Rovaglia came up to, uh, came off the bench to set up the game winner in stoppage time as well. Who was the other guy that went? We had we had three players go. Rovaglia, Parola, oh Barbieri, our right back. Yeah, so we had uh, three players go to the under nineteen championships, and they won it with Italy as well. So that's uh, that's really good to see that because uh, there there is something in that. You know, winning culture, getting getting youngsters winning things early. I, I do believe that does actually mean things. What I don't, I don't know. But um, anyway, uh, let's just move on to the first game of the season, and it is indeed Frozen One away from home. And again, big game in in match day one in the Serie A because these will be one of the teams we'll be battling with come the end of the season to keep ourselves in the Serie A. So into the first game of the season, as you can see, uh, Sabelli is suspended after being red carded on the final day. Martella is injured, so bloody good thing we signed those two new wing backs for us. And uh, Tremor Lada, who's a loan player that came out from last season, he damaged his cruciate ligaments whilst out on loan last year. I don't think this guy will ever play for us. Everyone else is fit. And we'll start with a 5-3-2. As you can see, I've made two different tactical systems. A 5-2-1-2 tiki-taka style of play. Uh, this will be when we want to try Picardi, the uh, young attacking midfielder who, despite going in a mentoring group, has not changed his personality or increased determination. And we still have the Gigan press as well, in case we do want to play all wingers. But we stick with the 5-3-2. We used this system practically every game last season. And I still believe it is the way to play. So Marco Moller remains in goal and takes the number one jersey. And the back five is now Muru and De Pauli, the new signings from Sampdoria at wing back with Sestana, Magnani, the new signing, and Armini in the back three. Tonali, Bissoli, and Viviani are our midfield trio once again. And up top, Rovaglia. And no, hang on, I was going to play Valatelli. Ah, oh, I've done the team meeting now. I'll have to keep up with Rovaglia. It was supposed to be Valatelli and uh, Patagna. I forgot to make the change. But we Rovaglia, the kid, and a Patagna. So four of our new signings making the debuts today. On the bench, Alfonso, Parola, Mangravati, Barbieri, Iglio, De Sena, Morosini, Dalmonte, Luis Ignoli. Tori Grossa and Mario Balotelli as well. He should be started. First game of the Serie A season. It's Frozen One away, and I've only selected 11 subs. All right, just just pop just pop the kid Picardi on there. There we go. First of the uh, 38. It's Frozen One away from home. I could swear I put Balotelli in the starting 11, but I I must not have done. Anyway, I, I still feel confident. He win Mario, our top scorer of last year. He scored that all important penalty on the final day, sitting on the bench. And I'm very excited about Patagna as well, man. Again, if he can hit the ground running in this team as he wins it back straight away, then I'll feel very confident, man. Haven't had a target man in this team since the save began. Now we've got one. And again, he looks like a real bully up top, you know, a really assertive player as the Pauli finds Muru as the former Sampdoria boys link up and Tonali. Now where 
wearing the captain's armband officially for Sampdoria finds Nicola down the left hand side. Talked about the importance of wing backs. Tackled though and wins it back. Where are we going? Long high like this as Viviani goes down the right and beats one and rolls it through to De Pauli. Our new right back. Oh, yes, and a dream start for Ravagli. At last season, only one goal in this Serie A all season long. Three minutes into the new campaign, he's already equaled his goal tally from last season. And he was, the, I think, he was the second highest scorer at the under 19 championships with Italy. He went away with the national team on international duty. He learned how to score in the summer, and he's come back and got one for his club. 1 0 Brescia. And the assist coming from De Paoli. The new wing back in at the right side in 40 suspended Sabelli. Again, in this system, those wing backs have got to be good when going forward because they're often going to be the guys that get the assist. So, pressure in front, 1 0 up on the opening day. This would be a dream start to our second season. Wow, what a lackluster first half. But you know what? I'd definitely take this. Ravaglia getting off the mark. De Pauli getting an assist on his debut. And getting a clean sheet after being so bad at them last season as well on the opening day. This will be a solid result. Come on, Brescia. Good to see Lazio in front against Empoli as well. Because, again, they will be one of the teams desperate to avoid relegation come the end of the season. We'll be scrapping with them for survival. And in one of the worst opening days of the season, there's been one highlight and we still lead. I'll take it, though. Wow, what an absolutely shocking opening day. But you know what? I'll take this every day of the week. Match day one, starting off with a victory. And we beat what will be a relegation or I would this season. And keep a clean sheet. <laughs> I'll take that. That was terrible. <laughs> that was absolutely terrible. Nothing went on whatsoever. But, you know, Magnani with a 7.0 on his debut. Muir with a 7.2 on his debut. An assist for De Pauli on his debut. Patagna didn't really do anything at all in this game. Bit disappointing, but otherwise, Ravaglia scoring on his first game for the season. I mean, that <laughs> that's more than fine for me, man. That's more than fine for me. Well done, lads. That's a good win for us. And Brescia start of a win in our second season in charge against a relegation rival this season. I'll take that every day of the week. It was an exciting... It wasn't exactly pretty, but it's three points on the board, baby, and a clean sheet as well. I'll tell you that every day of the week. So that was this episode of Club and Country, guys. I can't believe that. I was thinking this could be like a five-goal thriller, relegation six-pointer. Nope, one highlight, one goal, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching, though. I uh, hope you enjoyed the season opening. If you have done, please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a great day, and I will see you for the next episode with games against... Um, who should we come back with here? Not entirely sure. Let's let's gather some pace to start the season on. Come back sometime in October. Maybe maybe Inter Milan at home and Torino away against our former staff members, perhaps. Not entirely sure, but uh, probably sometime in October, if not going all the way to November with Hellas Verona and Empoli at home as well. Probably this one here, though, uh, against Inter and Torino. Have a great day, guys. Much love to you all, and I'll see you for the next episode of Club and Country. Hopefully with a more exciting game to report very soon.